Okay, we are at Granger RV Recreational Vehicle Place, and we it's in Orange, Orange, Texas. There's the sign. It's a small little dealership, but they are so kind, and they have been so great, and this is supposed to be ours tonight. I'm going to show you how we're going to hook it up. Okay, I have never seen this before. Look at that. So they get somebody in here, this Granger RV place in um, Orange, Texas. It's right outside of Port Arthur. And look how beautiful this, this fifth wheel is. We're really excited, but I'm gonna tell you the reason why I'm videotaping this is because they staged it. Yeah, look how nice it does. I mean, they, they really did a good job staging this thing. I'm, I'm, I'm sure some of you have already seen staging, but in an RV, I had never seen staging in an RV. This is really, look at this. This person that he said he has somebody that does it for them. She is so good <laughs> that it sold it for me. But look at this. We bought an Alliance, um, Keystone Alliance. No, it's a Keystone Alpine. Alpine, sorry. Yep, Keystone Alpine, battery low voltage, okay, dismiss. We, yeah, we bought a so Keystone this. Alpine, and I just really had to show you guys the, um, I really just had to show the staging efforts of this uh, little, it's not even a big RV that's, that's, dealer. It's not, oh yeah, it's yeah. not even a big no, RV no, dealer. No. It's actually, you know, a small RV dealer and they just did a fantastic job at showing off their um, RVs. And I just wanted to show that to y'all that. So why don't so you tell me, what do we got here? Okay, so this is the Keystone Alpine 3220 RL. It's the rear living. Um, it's a 2022 model. And we bought it here at uh, Granger RV in Orange, Texas. And uh, I'm absolutely pleased with it. If you look around, the, uh, the color scheme in here is, I, I really like the color scheme. We got no. this one and we're already trying to put stuff away and everybody knows how that is. Oh um, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not been easy because right now this, um, they are washing it and yeah, cleaning it. They just got done the inside. They allowed me to come a couple times to pre-do stuff so that the day of the move we're not the day of the move we right. are not yeah, I mean, you're, you're gonna you're gonna be busy you're gonna be busy the rest of the week trying to figure out probably next week too trying to figure out where where things are gonna go um and show them that oh yeah y'all so. have to see this look at this isn't that beautiful but now look storage so storage area back there then you know not that i can reach it but it's okay <laughs> Show, show this way for me to get home from work. No, I'm gonna get a step stool. Look at that. Look at that oven. What I like, what I like about these is, so not that, but this right here, it's got this, the soft close, and then it has a magnet that catches it and keeps it closed. Wow. It's pretty cool. And <laughs> this refrigerator, this refrigerator is ridiculous, and we're really happy about it. Oh my it. goodness. I'm just excited about having, not having to run back my bag of ice all the time. Got ice and have an ice maker. I can't believe it has an ice maker. Okay, we're going in to get our prep. It's going to be your 
leveling system. This one's pretty pretty easy. So you just power on. Yep. So when we're ready to get it on your truck, what we're gonna do is actually hit all retract. And what it's gonna do is gonna pull up your middle and your rear jacks only. Okay. okay. It should go all the way up. Sometimes it thinks they're up and you gotta hit it again and then they'll come all the way up again. Gotcha. And also before you auto level, you have to hit all, all retract as well. Because if all these lights are on right here, it will not level it. It's I don't know why, it's just this new system, it's not allowing it to level. So you hit all retract and then it makes sure all the jacks are up and then you can hit auto level and it'll do its thing. Okay. Then you can manually lift up the sides, lift up the front, lower, rear. Kind of self-explanatory all right here. And when it's operating, that will light right here will be on. If it gets low voltage, it'll tell you there. And if it's kind of got a bad so, slope, it'll tell you right there. And then you got your power on and off. Okay. Right there. That's right here. It's pointing to this one. This is the one that the furnace is operating off right mm -hmm. now. And then if we wanted to, we could go to the other one, turn that one on, do the same concept, then just turn that one back off. Now with that, with this, uh, with this valve, when when this, so it's over here. If, if you have both tanks open, and it's pointing it's over only here, pull out of the one that it's pointing to. So it will it will not automatically go to this. Not one. to my knowledge, but you can put it directly in the center, right here. And it'll actually pull out of both of them. Okay. Which I don't recommend because you'll run out of gas simultaneously. Right. It's right. easier just to keep it pointed at point one, one, and then you when you're done for that one, point it to the other one so you can go get that one filled. Yep. Then just pass the storage here. That if you kind of pop it off, we'll get that done real fast. Oh. Okay. Then you got your hookups, tank flush. This is the way it's actually hooked up can work. You can just keep your city water connection right here, which yep. is just going to be water hose. And when you're ready to dump your tank, you can actually just turn that on and it'll put water directly in your black tank to help flush it out, get any debris or anything that's still oh, stuck. Oh, so that's what this is. Uh, this is an outside shower. But you well, can, I'm, I mean, yeah. I mean, but this this is for the black tank um, flush. Yes, this is your black tank flush here. Okay. Uh, winterizing, <clears throat> and then your city water connection. Then, if you need to use your fresh water tank, while well, you've got your city water connection here, just you can point that down water here. right here. And, it's, and of course, you got your low point drains right underneath, right here. You got your hot and your cold side. Yep. And then your your tanks right here. Just Close those. Yep. And then this will unscrew here. So you can run your water, water. Your everything up through the bottom. Right gotcha. There. Now how do they, how is this a, you know, you never run out of hot water? That. Right there, it's a tankless water heater. It's like the on-demand water heaters on, at a house. Okay. As long as you've got gas, you have hot water. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now does that run off electric when you're plugged in? No, it's strictly it's gas. strictly gas. Yes, strictly okay. gas. Oh okay. boy. <laughs> this runs off of your battery. Um, so when we unplug it, You'll just hold it, hold up, and it's just going to reel itself. I always recommend pull all your slack out. Oh yeah, so pull can, it and then and then walk it. Yeah, and try and get it all kind of close so you don't have to, so it's not trying to drag it or Burn anything. It, gotcha. Okay. You do have a walkable roof. You can get up there and fall on there, and you're not going to go through. So that's good. That's always a plus having a sturdy roof like that. I know. Is it true that if if you don't have a ladder on the back, you weren't meant to go up on the roof? It is, but that's it what I've been at told. the same time, it's more or less you just need to know where you're stepping. You need to step on all the trusses that are there instead of just yeah. casually walking across it. You got to right. make your bigger steps. But you weren't told wrong at the same time. But it is, it's hit or miss on that. It's just like it's just like walking in an attic. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> you, as long as you stay on the trusses, you're fine. Well, that's your, you that's your, there, you go, <laughs> yeah, well, that's field. your thing. <laughs> Battery connection here. Uh, here's your docking lights for the front. This is your light switch for your front lights. That are going to be right here. That's a small battery. That is everything? It's just 12 volt system is all that's for. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then I'm not really sure why it has the plug because you do have the solar panels up top already. I guess if you wanted to add panels. Uh, yeah, extra panels. Stop. And, Maybe like when you start. Oh, pull this them is out. only for like a solar. Correct. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was thinking it was like for if you were doing something outside, you could plug that into the solar. <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't think so. The solar panels is new to me. We just now, I think 22 is really when uh, Alpine started to put the solar panels on their units. Right. And well, so a lot. all new to me. Already. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people that are full timers, they started getting solar panels. Mm -hmm. So. so it's now, a big it's a big win for people. Right. So here's the rundown oh, in here. Oh, good too. Is that? Oh yeah, that feels good too. I can feel it all the way over here. Yeah, those do a pretty decent job. 
But I wouldn't recommend using that to try and heat up the whole unit. No. Put the furnace on, and then that'll help maintain everything. Right. Right. Now with the heat, the heat that has a heat pump, right? Yes. As a, so, uh, I think it's like a, oh, I can't remember the BTU of the heat pump on it. So basically the furnace will get it to temperature yeah, so and once we, it does, that will automatically shut off. So what it's gonna do is you're gonna turn it to the electric side of it and it's going to uh, kick your furnace on, bring it up to your designated temperature you want, shut off that furnace and that'll maintain it. But if it drops temperature real fast in here, it might kick that furnace back on because they don't want it to keep overusing right, that heat over. But you got 130 degree water coming out. Ah, is it good? <laughs> My hands are too cold to touch it, it'll burn. I wanna warm them up then. No, it's gonna hurt. <laughs> oh, that'd be good. No, that's gonna it be needs good. to come up to a slow. Yeah, that's gonna be good. <clears throat> Actually, turn your hot water heater on. That's right here. That's what we need right here. So this is gonna be your water heater right here. Okay. It only goes up to 130. Will not go past that. Then you can change your temperature here. Okay. So that's what that is. That that's that's just the hot water heater. Yes, just the hot water heater. Gotcha. This right here, having this on, yep, is more or less going to keep the uh, water that's in the uh, tank when you're not using it warm, hot. It's going to turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off, and if you don't want to use it, you just turn, make sure that's not showing, and then you just kick on your hot water, and you know, you'll about 45 seconds maybe. Right. It'll take to get you your warm. Keep it that way. You should have your whatever. Whenever it pushes out all the water out of the lines, you'll have that hot. Gotcha. And then right here is how you actually operate everything in your trailer. That was it. We just got back, got everything hooked up. And we're really excited to be joining the fifth wheel family. Uh, thanks for watching and don't forget to enjoy the ride.